If you've ever seen a rocket launch like then you have probably noticed that it starts like this and ends up like this. So the rocket actually loses a lot of its structure. Why does it happen? Why is it necessary that rockets have stages that separate as it goes to space? So we need to construct a mathematical model Initially, we have a rocket that I just draw as a rectangle of mass big M that travels upwards at a speed v of t. So it happens at time t. And then I consider a small change in time. So after delta t, what happens? Well, I still have the main body of my rocket, but I have also ejected some fuel. So this amount we would call delta M. And so that's how much the rocket has lost. So here I will have M plus delta m. So why do I write plus instead of minus? Because my because, because m decreases. So think of dm, this change in mass, as a negative value. Okay, so then actually if I add dm to m, I would decrease m. So suppose that the ejection speed of my fuel is u, and then the speed of my rocket becomes v of t plus delta t. Right? And the idea is to find out an expression for speed in terms of all these variables and see how it grows. So now we use a principle from physics which is called conservation of momentum or impulse. So initially the moment is mass of my rocket times its speed and after delta t my one of my bodies have has mass m plus delta m times its speed v of t plus delta t and then the mass of the second body is minus delta m. So it's plus, if you like, <coughs> of minus delta m. Imagine that, remember that delta m is negative. And the speed will be v of t plus delta t minus u. Because when fuel was inside my rocket, it was traveling at this speed but u is in the opposite direction, so this is what I get. Now, if I just expand the brackets on the right-hand side, what do I get? I get m of t times v of t plus delta t plus delta m v of t plus delta t minus minus delta m of v t plus delta t plus u g m. So now I have these two, two terms the same, so I can cancel them out. And now we need to rearrange the equation because, well, m of t can be factored out. 
So we can factor out m of t and have v of t plus delta t minus v of t is equal to minus u times dm. So now, if I divide through by delta t, which is my time increment, get this fraction. I'm interchanging this symbol with this symbol, so don't be confused. And here, get dm by dt. So now, this is the important step, as I decrease my time increment, this fraction, of course, be becomes a derivative by definition. So I get dv by dt is minus u of dm dt. So this is the differential equation that we need to solve. And <clears throat> it is separable. So what do we get? We get that dv is minus u over m of t. Yeah, so maybe it was more reasonable to denote this uh, mass with a smaller m, but anyway, you get the idea. Here I have dm. So then if I integrate, on the left-hand side, I get, I get v of t minus my initial speed that I call v0 equals to, here I integrate with respect to m, and it's 1 over m, u is constant, is just ejection speed, that's constant. So actually here, I get minus u of a logarithm, and the upper bound is my current, current mass, so it's m of t, minus my initial mass, initial mass of the of the rocket. So then on the right hand side using logarithm law we can write it as a ratio of current mass and initial mass. And so overall we have that v of t is v naught plus u of logarithm m naught divided by m of t. So remember that if I have a factor in front of my logarithm, I can bring it to the exponent and to the minus one, this fraction will be reversed. So this is the equation that we get. And uh, you may have seen this equation before uh, and uh, it may have come to you under the name of Tsiolkovsky's equation. So now we want to look at that, at this equation, and study why does it impose bounds on the structure of the rocket. All right, so I rewrote my equation up here, and let us consider the actual world, uh, the real world situation. So the rocket starts from rest. So we can assume that V naught is zero. And now let's think about M naught. Let's think about the different parts that the rocket is composed of. So if here we have a rocket, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, you've seen rockets, so <laughs> so if uh, m naught is the total mass, it's composed of mass of the of a fuel. We also have what we should call 
uh, useful mass, meaning the mass of the satellite or something that the rocket needs to bring to the orbit or to outer space. And then the what's left is the structural mass. So it's the mass of the rocket that that is due to its structure, due to the metal and the materials. Okay, so now consider an ideal situation. So I mean, to start with, in deriving this equation, we have not assumed the effect of air resistance, for example. So this equation is quite idealized already, but now, Let's simplify our problem even further. Suppose that our rocket has no, has no load and basically our target is to arrive to outer space without any, any baggage. So the useful mass is zero. Now, as t goes to infinity, we end, we use up all of our fuel and once that happens, we reach our maximal speed. So at that point, it's gonna be what? It's gonna be u of logarithm m naught over, at this point, there will be no fuel. So we will, we'll just have the structural mass of the rocket. Now, if we, refer to real world, it would tell us that the average ejection speed that's been achieved on rocket engines is going to be about three kilometers per second. So then for this ratio, real world uh, rockets end up having this ratio to be around 10. And this is quite surprising. It basically means that fuel occupies around 90% of the whole rocket. And you can actually confirm it if you look at, for example, Saturn V specifications. Okay, so these are real world constants. And if you have a calculator under your hand, you will be able to calculate this maximal speed. So if you do the calculation, your answer would be around 6.9, which is close to seven kilometers per second. But note that from physics, we can actually calculate the minimal speed required to get uh, on the Earth's orbit. So to get to orbit the Earth, the speed has to be around eight kilometers per second. And this is an easy physics exercise, so uh, make sure that you can actually show this number. So what do we get? Even in our idealized situation, where the rocket doesn't have any, any useful mass and there is no air resistance, we still cannot reach the necessary speed in order to get to the orbit, right? So this happens because we are not getting rid of this structural mass. So if our rocket had uh, fuel buckets, fuel tanks, then once they're empty, we're not releasing them. We are carrying useless mass. It makes our rocket heavy and it doesn't allow us to break the threshold. Therefore, it is a very straightforward conclusion that rockets need stages.
So the question that we will consider in the next video is how many stages do we need? Are two stages gonna be enough? Or maybe three or four? And what number is the most efficient number of stages? So this is a very nice question. You might know the answer from experience, from the rockets that you've seen, but actually you can answer this question by continuing building on this model that uh, made us arrive at this equation. But anyway, I think it's quite nice that mathematics actually demonstrates physical limitations of, uh, of the rocket construction and tells us something about uh, how we should engineer these rockets.